You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hey there. Welcome to episode 128 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, how you doing? It's your host, Sean, coming back at you with another exciting episode of Soul Forge. I hope you're prepared. All right, so what are we talking about this week, gang? Well, let's talk about going home again, and if that's even possible. I don't know if it is. It might be. They say you can never go home again, but that's not strictly true. Because you can. You can go home again, like I did this past weekend. Is it ever the same? Of course not. People change. People go away. Things happen. So it's never going to be exactly as it was. But yes, you can go home again. Okay, but before we talk about going home again, let's think about what may have prompted this week's topic. Now, as we all know, well, at least I think we all know. Did I mention this last week on the last episode? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, this past weekend, I went back home to Sault Ste. Marie because my uncle Frank had passed away and I'd already missed two family funerals earlier in the year, and I wasn't going to miss a third one, because no siree Bob, I wasn't going to do it. So I took the Friday off of work, and traveled down, because the funeral was Saturday, and I got to see family that I hadn't seen, some, ever, uh, most of the others not since uh, the 90s, so... That was pretty fantastic, actually. Good to see all those people that I hadn't seen in forever. Uh, But nostalgically speaking, what I did was... Well, as you know, I have another podcast, the Rusted Robot Podcast, that I've been doing since 2014. And as I was preparing to go away for the the trip, I was like, Well, uh, Josh and I won't have time to record an episode for Sunday because uh, Rusted Robot always comes out on a Sunday, we record on the Saturday, and so I was thinking, mm, am I just going to leave this weekend blank and not have anything, or can I find something from the archives that might be suitable for this? And I did. Uh, in the past, I've played recordings of, uh, well, re-recordings, or repeat episodes of Robert J. Sawyer interview, which I did on episode 13 of Rusted Robot. Robert Sawyer is my favorite author of all time, and he's a Canadian, and I actually met him this past summer at Dragon Con. You can uh, hear all about that on episode 117 of Soul Forge. But what I was doing is I was looking through the archives, and I didn't want to have a repeat episode. So instead what I did was looked at all the links on the rustedrobot.podbean.com a homepage for the podcast. In the early days when I was really into it and making sure everything was updated and doing all the things that you do when you're new to something, I posted the links to other podcasts that I had guested on. The 10 Forward podcast was a show produced, uh, well, I'm not sure where produced exactly. The hosts were from the UK and also from uh, the USA. The website was a British production. But anyway, the uh, the main person from uh, Ten Forward had reached out to me. Sina was her name. That's how Rusted Robot really got uh, popular and famous and known around the world because lots of people listen to the uh, Ten Forward podcast. So I had guested on that with Bridget, and then another episode came along where they did uh, special episodes, like. Uh, like Desert Island Trek, what would your favorite uh, episodes of Star Trek be that you would take to a desert island? Uh, which And then they had Shipwreck Trek, which five episodes would you lose for all time? That kind of thing. They had different segments. 
and I had guessed it on their desert island trek, and I was like, you know what? That would be a fantastic episode to play for this weekend. It's a repeat episode, but it came out in 2014. Uh, most people probably hadn't heard it because, well, for various reasons, I guess. And it was with Paul and Jarman and me. So Jarman, of course, is the guy who does the opening uh, theme tune for this podcast, and Paul is the guy that uh, does once a month UK correspondent episode uh, segments for Rusted Robot. And we also did a podcast together for uh, 40 or so episodes back in 2015-16, a uh, sci-fi waffle podcast. Most of you know this already, especially if you're following both of my podcasts, you know pretty much all the history. So anyway, long story short, I played episode 118 of the 10 Forward, where I talked about my favorite Star Trek episodes. Uh, I was still with Bridget at the time when I was recording that, and so a bunch of talks about her were sprinkled throughout that episode, I guess. And that was nostalgic and kind of sad, and you all know this story about that because that's episode 68 of this podcast. But it got me thinking about the past, times that'll never come again, and then going to my Uncle Frank's funeral... That was something else, too. Seeing the family members that I hadn't seen in forever, and just being back home again. And it's of course it's not the same, but it was was good to see the people. Uh, There were hardly any tears at the funeral, because that's not what Frank wanted. Uh, He he wanted a a celebration of life, because he was a a happy man, he was an honest man, He, he took a genuine interest in people. And I heard stories and other, uh, other anecdotes about Frank. Things I didn't necessarily know, uh, per se, but uh, he was the kind of guy that if you, if you went on a shopping trip with him, he would talk to people, but not just say, hey, how are you? He would take a genuine interest in you, and shopping trips could last all day because he would just talk to people and find out about their lives and, and get updates and take a genuine interest. I'm like, oh, you know what? It, it always felt like when you were talking to Frank, he, he was he was seeing you for who you were, and, and that's the kind of person that I aspire to be. Like, I just don't want to know the surface details. I always want to know a little bit more. Like, when people, you'll ask them, Hey, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. And, and then you'll carry on with the conversation. But then I'll, I'll always turn it around. Then I'll turn it back and I'll say, Okay, but how are you really? And then they'll tell you. But most people don't do that. Or at least, that's what I'm told. Anyway, Frank was a great man. He was 84 years old. He died uh, as he lived, with uh, a smile on his face and doing what he loved. He was out hunting. Well, there's more details, but I won't go into that. doesn't matter for this episode here. Uh, just that uh, it made me think a lot. And it's always good to be with family. This is on my dad's side of the family. It's a huge side of the family. People came from as far away as, uh, as Toronto. And also uh, one guy that I met, which was Frank's oldest son, Frank, uh, he came all the way from Alberta somewhere. I, I don't think I'd ever actually met this Frank Jr., uh, because he'd been out west forever. Met people I hadn't met before. Met people I hadn't seen since the 90s. Uh, it was it was pretty interesting. Got to see my uh, buddy Andrew. He's the one who created the logo for the Rusted Robot podcast. And I've known him since 1987, since grade 6. And every time I go to the Sioux, he always asks me, When are you moving back here, Sean? And I always say, Well, Andrew, let me put it like this. You need to listen to this promo for another podcast here on the ESO Network. The answer. The ultimate answer to fandom, geekiness, and everything is 42. That's right, Broad Speculation. And on the 42 cast, we bring you drama-free discussions on television shows, movies, video games, novels, and comics. So don't bother thinking about the question. Just go straight to the answer. It's only on the 42 cast. Your ultimate answer to fandom, geekiness, and everything. So he listens to the promo for another podcast on the ESO Network, and he says, Sean, that is not an answer to my question. When are you moving back? And I always say, you know what? I would love to move back, but it's not a good time. So this episode here is kind of a little bit of speculation on the logistics of what it would take to move back. Because, uh, for a brief history detail here, I was born in Sault Ste. Marie in 1976. In 1995, I moved to North Bay to go to university and lived there off and on until 2003 when I moved up here to Timmins. So, as of next March, I'll have been living here in Timmins for 17 years. Now, that's a long time. 
that's most of my adult life. And I've built a community, a life, something here in the land that culture forgot. I'm not sure what you would call it exactly, but it's in existence. Uh, I've been working at the post office for almost 13 years. My son is going to be 14 in a couple weeks. I've got a lot of friends here. I've, I've got the podcast with Josh, the Rusted Robot podcast. I do this one here with a wide variety of people like Karen and Tracy and Heather and Jason and all kinds of different people. I'm probably missing all a bunch of them, but anyway, you can listen to those episodes for all the details. And I don't know how I would move back to the Sioux. Well, I, I do know how. I would just go find a place to live. I could stay with my brother or my dad or somebody. But I bought a house here last year. Do I just sell it? Do I do I leave my brother Robin to take care of my house? I don't think that's a good idea. He can't even take care of himself. He ruined his life and that's why he's here now. So I can't trust Robin to take care of my house while I figure out what I'm doing in Sault Ste. Marie. And my boy is only in grade 9. I can't leave him yet. I could. And people have told me for years, Oh, it'll be fine. You can visit him in the summer and at Christmas. You know. But is that really enough? The, the poor kid is is becoming a man. He needs his dad around. I'm sure he's got his stepdad and his mom, but boy needs his father, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, it's it's a tough decision. I, I'd love to move back home, but I, 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 I've kind of placed a moratorium on myself, maybe. I don't know what, what the right word is, but I've told myself that I can't leave until he's graduated high school. So, that's another three and a half years, at which point I will be 47. <laughs> 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 47 I would like to throw that in whenever I can, but anyway, uh, so I'll be I'll be forty seven. He'll be what eighteen ish, I guess, and he'll be going off to college or university. And I've thought, what am I going to do? Am I going to move to the town where he goes to school? Am I going to stay here? Am I going to move to the Sioux? I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he'll just be a townie forever and not go away. I don't know. I hope he does. I hope he makes something of himself before the world burns. But uh, let's say. What year would that be? Uh, let's say 2023, just to throw out a year here. And I move back to the Sioux. Am I going to still be a mailman? Am I going to transfer from one town to another and just do that and continue being a mailman? I don't know. It's a possibility, and it would be, would be the easiest way to do it because I'd have a job, uh, I could stay with somebody until I found a place to live, and I could sell my house because... Uh, it'll have been five years, roughly, since I've had the place, and that's when the mortgage renews. So I could just sell it, be in the soup. And Andrew and I could open up a comic book shop that we've dreamed about since the very beginning of time, or I could uh, work at the steel plant, which is the option that everybody tells me. Well, just just come on back and work at the steel plant. It'll be great. And the steel plant's been there forever, but it's never been secure. Uh, actually, I know Uncle Frank... Uh, worked there for about 40 years, and people still work there. Andrew works there. Uh, a bunch of people were just laid off, though, and the steel prices are always fluctuating, and the place is always uh, bought and sold by different companies, and it doesn't feel very secure. But for people who've been there a long time, it seems to be a great option. Uh, am I that kind of guy? Mm, I can't see myself working in a steel plant, uh, although apparently the money is fantastic. It's not all about money in life, which I've slowly come to realize over time. But be that as it may, that would be an option. Work at the steel plant, work at the post office, maybe get my dad to teach me all the ins and outs of his business because he's he's pretty much set to retire. He's, uh, well, actually, as I'm recording this, November 19th, he's 66 today. Yeah, he's he's pretty much done. His health isn't great. He's been doing it since I think he was 13. And uh, what's he do? He moves houses, builds basements that kind of thing, construction stuff, and I helped him a lot when I was a teenager. I don't like it, though. I've never been a fan of getting dirty, so, mm, you know, not my thing. I know a bit about it, and it would probably be a great opportunity, but I feel like I'm too old for it. I haven't been doing it steady since I was 13 or whatever. Uh, I haven't done it in more than 20 years, 
but it, it is a good sense of accomplishment. And if I could go back in time, I'd probably be a, an electrician or a carpenter or something or help dad with the company. But uh, that's not the path I chose. I became an English major because, well, I wanted to be a highfalutin writer or editor or something. I don't even know what I wanted to do. I just, who knows? I just wanted to be uh, a fancy, rich, traveling man. And none of that's ever happened, and I've never gone anywhere, except for a couple road trips this past year, as you know. But that's not the point. The point is, it would be great to move back to the Sioux. Uh, Robin doesn't want to go back, though. He, he's been here about seven, six, seven months, and uh, he's like, mm, no, I just, I just don't want to. I don't want to move back, and I, I don't like that you want to move back now that I'm here with you. And, and I can get behind that. I understand it completely. Uh, but the point is, if I did leave here in four or five years from now, I'd uh, have to leave my job and my security and everything that I know. I'd have to leave all the friends that I've made over the past 17, well, by that point, 20 years, and just start up a whole brand new life. I have a couple friends in the Sioux that I've known since uh, grade 6 or high school or whatever, but I, I don't have a whole life there, and it would be starting over, and I'd be almost 50 years old, and that's a scary thought. And, and actually, I should mention this now, at my last counseling session, I talked to the guy, and we are talking about a bunch of stuff, and it, uh, it turns out that my entire life has been defined by fear. And what do I mean by that? Well, I wanted to go do this, but I was afraid. I wanted to go do that thing, but I was afraid. So, mostly, I ended up doing nothing. Like I was going to go teach English overseas. Didn't do it. Uh, thought about backpacking across Europe. Didn't do it. I was scared. You know, so basically nothing happened because I was afraid. And I don't want to be that guy anymore. So at the last session, he, uh, he drew a, a line on the paper and he said, this is all your life before the age of 43, which I am now. And he said, here's fear. Going forward, no fear. And he gave me a mantra. And I, I, when, I, uh, when I think about it, I, I repeat it to myself and it's, I'm not afraid. I can do the things. I am doing the things. I can do all the things because I'm not afraid. Something like that, anyway. It changes every day, whenever I say it in my head. But uh, that, that's where I'm planning on living my life now, in the non-fear zone. No fear, you know? So, you know what? I could. I could move back to the Sioux and start up a, a, a new life again, or resume, I, not really resume my old one, but, uh, yeah. You know what? It would be fine. Because as I was in the Sioux, I stayed with my brother Curtis this past weekend, and him and his wife and I, we all sat around talking until the late hours of the morning, uh, having a couple of drinks and just a good, good conversation. And I miss that. That was, that was a lot of fun. There's nothing better than a good conversation. We could do that. And Andrew and I could resume our uh, love of all things sci-fi and maybe open up a comic book shop. Maybe not. But you know what? I, I miss that relationship that I've had since uh, grade six. He's a big collector of toys, just like I am. And we, we like a lot of the same things. And that would be awesome. So maybe, you know what? Maybe in four years, I will be recording an episode from the Sioux, my new home, wherever that may be. Uh, in the meantime, that's for future Sean to worry about. Uh, right now, I'm not going to be fearful. I'm going to let the future take care of itself. I don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't matter. You know what does matter, though? Do you guys like podcasts? I know you do, because you're listening to this one. Uh, we just had our uh, ESO quarterly meeting the other day. We're going to have to record some new promos again in March. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, they have come out with a new promo for their Patreon. If, if any of you out there like to support podcasts, and I know you do... Uh, they only ask 25 cents a week or something, but I'm going to play this promo here for the ESO pa Patreon, Patreon. Everyone these days could use a little support, and your friends at the ESO Network are no different. With the ESO Network Patreon, the cool thing is, is when you help support us, it's you who will benefit. With four tiers starting for as little as 25 cents a week, you can listen to some of your favorite network podcasts early, hear exclusive content, maybe get some ESO swag, or even possibly take a shot at the geek seat. All you need to do is sign up at patreon.com backslash ESO network. And that's just uh, if, you, if you want to support them and uh, give them some of your money. 
and if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, just share the links. That's that's the best way to support a podcast. Tell your friends, share the links, uh, let people know that there's a cool podcast out there. And that's pretty much it. But anyway, that's just a little bit of business I wanted to get over with. Uh, so, home again, home again? Can you go home again? You can, but it's going to be different. It's going to be an unknown quantity. No idea what's going to happen or how it's going to turn out. Uh, I have at least three and a half years to think about it and plan for it. And uh, we'll see what happens. But that's what's on my mind. And that's okay. What about you guys? Do you guys have any stories? I haven't gotten any emails. Uh, I would love to hear your stories about uh, if you've gone home again. And other things we've talked about like, uh, like the ghosting episode from a few weeks back. Or even any favorite jokes that you have. Because when Tracy and I did the uh, comedy special... Uh, we told some pretty cheesy jokes, and if you guys have any out there, why don't you email them to me? Soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. So I guess that's it for this week. Um, got some fun things planned for the future. Just have to coordinate all the co-hosts to get together at the same time so that we can get this big special episode that I've been thinking about for a while to come out, and uh, we'll see what happens. So that's all I know for now. I hope you're all doing fantastic and that you have some good news to share. Maybe check out the Facebook page because I have been sharing a buttload of positivity memes and funny things and all that kind of stuff. Hey, and you know what? I'm also on Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. That's Darth Vader, L-O-O. Uh, it's uh, a lot of stuff, more than just positivity memes. A lot of different uh, funny things, some dirty things. Well, not very many selfies. I don't do a lot of that. But there's some. And uh, I hope you check it out. Follow me. But anyway, in the meantime, thanks for listening to another fun, fantastic, exciting episode of the Soul Forge podcast. Make sure you check out other podcasts on the ESO Network and the Rusted Robot podcast, which I do with my good buddy Josh. Until next time, take care, have fun, and remember, may the flowers remind us why the rain was so necessary. This has been another episode of the Soul Forge Podcast. Find us on Twitter at Soul Forge Pod or email the show via soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. Soul Forge is a production of Sean Vanderloo and Friends. You can find Sean on Twitter and Instagram at Darth Vaderloo. Remember to visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and share the show with everyone you know. Thanks for stopping by the Forge. We'll keep the fires lit until your next visit. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.